Hi, welcome back. We're going to talk about stimulants, stimulus equivalents. And so what this is, is this is going to build upon the discrimination training lecture that we just did. And this is going to take it a step farther. We're going to get more into those conditional discriminations and what that looks like in the matching to sample. So what is stimulus equivalence? This is the demonstration of emergence relations through discrimination training. Eventually, people start connecting things that you never taught them together, and that would be an emergent relation. It's really the foundation for all our complex behaviors, reading, categorization, language, communication, social skills. We learn all that through emergent relations. So there's these core relations, <laughs> and you do need to know these. The first one is called reflexivity. It's the identity. You can match a sample to itself. So if you have a picture of a butterfly and then you have three other things, you can match one picture of a butterfly to the other picture of a butterfly, an exact match. So you can go, this goes with this, this goes with that. Any matching game where the pictures are the same is reflexivity. That's what you're learning. Symmetry is a reversal. So it's when you match A to B. So like if you have that picture of a butterfly and you match it to the word butterfly, you can match that back and forth. When you see the word butterfly, you match it to the picture of the butterfly. When you see the picture of the butterfly, you match it to the word butterfly. Transitivity is when you can match the picture of the butterfly to the word butterfly to the sound butterfly when you can match all three and back and forth, A to B, B to C, C, then A to C, and you can match them all. The stimuli, though they need to match in some way, there has to be something that matches them somewhat. They all have to be different. If they're exactly the same, we're in reflexivity. And we'll talk about this. Okay, so this is reflexivity. So I'm gonna give you two examples of each of these just to like fully learn this. So the first is a picture to picture match. So the child is shown a picture of a cat and then you put a cat, dog, and bird and the child picks the same picture as the cat. That's reflexivity. Um, an adult holds up a red apple on the table, a red apple, a banana, and orange, and the person picks up the same apple. So it's apple to apple. So that's all reflexivity, exact same to exact same. This is symmetry. As soon as taught, when shown the spoken word dog, the writing of dog, they select a picture of a dog. And then later, when shown a picture of a dog, they can, when someone says dog, they can touch the picture of the dog. When they're shown a picture of a dog, they can say dog. A learner is taught when they're shown the written word apple, they can touch the real apple. And when they're handed a real apple, they can point to the written word like on a card. That's symmetry. And then this is transivity. When spoken the word cat, the learner selects a toy cat. When shown the spoken word cat, the learner picks a picture of a cat. When shown a picture of cat, they select the toy cat. This is the emergent relation. When the spoken word cat is given, they select the toy cat and it's never been trained before, but they just match those together. And so that would be the emergent relation. So it only occurs in transivity. So when a learner matches the symbol of a canoe to the written word canoe, they can match the written word canoe to a little canoe model. When they're shown the symbol without training, they choose the real canoe model with no direct training. They just start matching that on their own. That would be the emergent relation. Establishing equivalency classes is when you present a sample stimuli and show a comparison stimuli, then prompt the learner to select the correct comparison. That's our matching to sample. We've been talking about that. And then you train two relations explicitly. You train A to B and B to C using matching to sample. And then you see if you have untrained relations, does A go to C naturally without reinforcement? You provide reinforcement during the training trials, not during the emergent relation probe. So what this does is it allows you to save time because emergent relations happen and then you have an equivalence class. So your matching to sample is present stimulus A, like 
saying dog, show some comparison. So a dog, cat, bird, prompt the selection. They pick the dog. You reinforce the picking the dog. And then you repeat for the picture of the dog in the written word dog. And that's how we do the matching to sample. We've shown that a couple times now. So you would train the word to the picture, train the association between the spoken word and the picture, train the picture to the object. So train that the picture of the football matches the object, the football object, and then you would test if the object goes to the verbal word. And here's some more examples. The train relation is a dark line and the derived is dashed, okay? You match cookie to a real cookie. So that could be a card with the word cookie on it or you saying cookie, but you match it to cookie. And then you match cookie to the word food because cookie is food. And then they know when they see a cookie, they could say the word cookie, that would be correct, but also saying the word food would be correct. So those two dashed lines are that emergent relation. And you can see it goes back and forth. So where there's no arrow is what you show them. So at the top, you show them real cookies and you train them to say, so you can see uh, naturally there should be an emergent relation that when you say the word cookie, they should just select that cookie, right? And the same with when you say the word cookie, they say the word food. And then when you say the word food, just naturally they should start saying the word cookie. And once you get those two emergent relations, then the cookie, showing them the cookie and them saying food both ways happens. You could use precision teaching. You could use a naturalistic method. You could use any of them. But you're continually giving them prompts and then they're giving you a response and you're reinforcing them for that. Using emergent relations, we're taking away so much of our work because we're not going to have to train that stuff. It should just naturally occur. And sometimes it takes time for that. Like the first few, you don't get as many emergent relations, but eventually if you're using this over and over again, the emergent relations come faster. So there's the word cat, a picture of a cat and a card with the word cat on it. You show them a cat and they say cat. That's that first line going down to the quotation cat. Then you show them a picture of a cat and they select the card with the cat and the rest should naturally eventually learn. So training relations, somebody says the spoken word apple, you train them, you say apple, they select a picture of an apple and then you show them a picture of an apple and they select the actual apple. You should have some emergent relations. When you say apple, they should be able to pick the actual apple. And when you show them an actual apple, they should be able to say apple. And so you get some natural learning without having to work at a table with DTT. It's kind of nice. Okay, so you show symbol five. So you show them a five on a card and you teach them that when you show them that they say five. And then when you say five, they select five dots. And then you should have some emergent relations. When you show them the card with the five, they should select the five dots. And when you show them the five dots, they should select the card with the symbol. So you get those emergent relations. You can see like for math, for early math, identifying five, six, seven, all the different things. You can see how important this is. When you show them a B, like on a card, they say B. When you say B, they identify a picture of a butterfly. When you show them that B, they should be able to point to the picture of the butterfly. When you show them the picture of the butterfly, they should say B, or it sounds like B. So we teach direct things like a picture of an apple and a real apple and the word apple are directly related. You can do this with categories. This is how we teach categories, which are so important later on for learning. You say fruit. When you say fruit, they have to point to a picture of a banana. When you show them a picture of a banana, they have to say yellow edible food. When you say a yellow edible food, they have to say fruit. You can start teaching more conceptual learning and descriptive learning. Now with this, you can start adding in other fruit. 
So you would say fruit and they point to a picture of apple and you can continue teaching the category. Okay, so this is for learning different words in different languages. You say gato and they have to say the English word. Then you say the English word and they have to point to the real picture of it. And then when you say the Spanish word, they have to point to the picture of it. When you show them the picture, they say the Spanish word. They'll learn that naturally. That's an emergent relation. This has so many applications. This is how we learn categories. This has applications in reading, math, social skills, everything, social studies, science, like all their academics, tons of application, but also our social skills and a lot of the things like life skills that we teach as well. You want to make sure your emergent relations won't happen unless you have really good accuracy for those first two that you're teaching. So you want to make sure that you have 90% Correct, and you need mastery too. It's not 90% one time when I did 10 trials. It's like 90% over three. And then you also have to probe for maintenance is really important. And you also have to track prompting. If you're prompting too much, the emergent relations kind of don't happen. So using errorless teaching with prompts fade uh, with prompts faded quickly. So you want to pro you want independence as quick as possible. If you're working on generalization, vary that stimuli, different fonts, colors, examples, so the learner recognizes the underlying concepts. You want to ensure consistent reinforcement during training, provide reinforcement only during training trials, not during test or testing emergent relations. So you don't reinforce emergent relations. They start, if you do that, they'll expect that. And that's not the point. The point is for the emergent relation to happen without discrimination training. Once they learn to find those connections, they'll do that all the time. And it helps them later on because they're able to find emergent relations just in schoolwork or other things. So you don't want to, they'll become too reinforcement dependent if you reinforce emergent relations. And then you want to monitor for false positives and retrain as needed. False positives do happen. Practice like coming up with classes. That's a really activity at this point. Think of things you, you could teach. Come up with three right now. Write them down on a piece of paper. This is complex stuff. So you always want to be looking at resources to do this. And you want to be getting supervision so you fully understand like this was an emergent relations is great. He, they did this correctly. Like, let's move on. You want that supervision with like somebody else helping you with these ideas. Okay. Thank you.